now walk, Chris walks off stage. He is not only an excellent LabVIEW architect, but he is one of our LabVIEW champions. And we've actually got our LabVIEW champions sitting right in front here. They, oh, thank you. They are our biggest fans. And yeah, round of applause. Our biggest fans and often my biggest critics. So I love you guys. I love you guys. I appreciate all the input. Thank you. All right. Mm. OK. So we started this keynote with a transportation example. Let's go back to transportation, but something that I'm sure we're all familiar with, the daily commute to work. Now, we're talking about the future, and I'm pretty sure somewhere someone pr promised me that I would have a flying car. I'm still waiting for it, but maybe this gentleman will help me out with that. Please welcome to the stage Santiago Morales from Joby Aviation. Santiago, welcome. Tell us a little bit about Joby. Thank you for having me. So every day, traffic congestion is a huge problem that limits humanity's potential to enjoy life and make progress. Think of your last week. How much time did you spend sitting in a car? What could you have done if you had that time back? Our mission at Joby is to save a billion people an hour a day. Sounds awesome. Uh, I hate to drive. My wife's sitting in the front. She knows that I hate to drive. Uh, I hate getting stuck in traffic, but I live far enough away from work that biking is not really an option. And I am not holding my breath for Austin to build an underground metro system. But Joby's vision is to literally rise above all that. So tell us about the vision. Yeah, our vision is to design, build, and operate a efficient, safe, and reliable flying vehicle for a public transportation use case. So I grew up in Costa Rica and my dad was the executive or an executive for one of the local airlines. So I spent a lot of time in cockpits of aircraft and since then have had this dream to impact the aviation industry in some manner. Our founder, Joe Ben, has been dreaming of revolutionizing it for even longer. And nowadays, uh, several technology trends have come together that actually make now the perfect time to do so. For example, we now have high density, cost effective electric batteries that can take thousands of charge cycles we have compact, high-torque electric motors, additive manufacturing, and new ways of making composites that really open up the solution space. We are taking these technologies to design an electric, vertical takeoff and landing air taxi that will make a new paradigm in transportation possible. OK, that is awesome, flying cars. So this would really revolutionize the way people live and work. Now, uh, Santiago, I read on Bloomberg that you're already doing flight trials in Northern California, and tell me, there's one, there's one hovering behind me right now, isn't there? Uh, unfortunately, our uh, prototype is confidential, and uh, we can't show you any pictures, but we do have this simulated video of one of our early concepts. Our current design is intended to carry four passengers for 150 miles on a single charge. VTOL means that it can take off and land vertically from any uh, flat surface that is large enough and to do so safely. And careful noise and vibration testing allow it to be 100 times quieter than a helicopter in its takeoff and landing phase and near silent in flyover. That's awesome. Now, this is a really innovative design. So tell me about some of the challenges you've had. Yeah, so we are starting from scratch with novel technologies. So our solution space is really open-ended. For us, iterating quickly through ideas is a huge priority. You can see here some of our concepts that we've explored. And uh, for us, weeding out these concepts as fast as possible is absolutely, absolutely essential. And to, in order to do that, we have uh, to do fast test turnaround, which uh, really puts uh, some pressure on us. OK, well, so you're talking about fast turnaround, going through a lot of designs. Give me an example of something you've experienced. <laughs> yeah, keeping, keeping up with this fast iteration can be very challenging. It has certainly made for some very memorable days. Uh, one that comes to mind is during one, some, one of our early flight test uh, sessions, we, we had a full day of flight tests every day that week was booked, full plans every day. And the first day, we were looking through our data, and we realized that there was something not quite right with one of the motors. And then we had to investigate. The only way to do that was to do a full teardown. And when you find this out at 6 PM at night, it's not ideal, especially when you have a full crew ready for next day. So we had to do a game time decision, 
split the team into two, have a team work through the night to rebuild, reinstrument, and reinstall the motor, and then uh, have the other team come in early in the morning to prep the aircraft and continue with flight testing. Uh, when you're doing a project such as this, every second counts. Okay, so that's, that's very fast design, <laughs> test, turnaround. So where have you been able to optimize? Yeah, so a key feature of any test system is flexibility. Flexibility to adapt and evolve to the design process. So our VIs are, uh, test, usually start with a simple data logging application, but quickly grow into a multi-channel complex system. For example, our aircraft data acquisition system has actually grown to seven TSN synchronized compact decks. Okay, so extensibility, uh, flexibility are really important to you. And we talk about that a lot at NI and on the keynote stage, but I'm curious in your words, what is it about the NI platform that you found particularly compelling? Yeah, let's walk over here. So we have a simplified uh, mock-up of our aircraft data acquisition system here with two TSN synchronized compact decks. So let me show you what I like about this. Take this Ethernet cable, for example. What I see here is not only a simple wire, but actually a lack of trigger wires that would otherwise have been needed. Those add weight and complexity to our system in both hardware and software. And really just in an industry where reliability and safety and weight are everything, mm -hmm. these kinds of savings are actually, you know, they're essential. They're a huge advantage. And, uh, TSN has really made our life a lot easier. It has made our hardware synchronization uh, much simpler that allows a new workflow where we can focus more time on the actual setup of the system and demands less time when we need to reconfigure it. Okay, so as a software guy, I interpret that as really cool NI hardware <laughs> that's easy to expand and synchronize. Okay, now what about the software? Uh, well, we've been beta testing uh, FlexLogger brand new uh, data logging software from NI that I think Omid has had something to do with. So you can see here on the screen, what we really like about this is that the workflow allows us to focus on the physical sensors at hand instead of having to deal with A to Ds and programming architecture. So here we have some accelerometers and strain. And let's say if we turn this guy on over here, let's say we're doing brand new propeller checkout. So if you can see here on the screen, we're collecting data. And let's say we've done our due diligence and we find that there's something weird uh, in the strain measurements on the aircraft. So we want to add a new strain gauge. We want to monitor something else. So we go ahead, we install the strain gauge, we install it in the, one of the modules, and we can come here and then we have two simple choices. I can copy paste and just add a new, a new task that already exists, or I can quickly set up the t a new task, a new strain task, with a few clicks, I map it to basically the physical location of the sensor, and then I can come over here and quickly do a graph that allows me to, if you will, now we have strain and vibration data logging uh, in real time, and then we can record effortlessly. That's that's awesome. No programming required. Now, Santiago, I know you said you were a beta tester for FlexLogger. I appreciate the input. It allowed my team to make a much better product. And I'm proud to announce the release of NI FlexLogger 1.0, our configuration-based data logging solution for our compact DAC, and soon, our IP67 rated field DAC hardware. All right, so Santiago, um, we talked earlier that you're doing very greenfield development. So that's given you opportunities to optimize. But as you look forward to production, um, you got to think about the fact that unlike the traditional aviation industry um, that's iterating on a known design, you, you do have a very you know, innovative design. What kind of challenges do you anticipate having? Yeah, when uh, technologies collide in a platform such as ours, um, we have to deal with a lot of challenges in systems testing. Systems testing becomes a very complex, multidisciplinary affair, and uh, it poses a lot of challenges with, uh, for us, especially when we have to tool up and staff up to do the migration from R&D to production. So as we move towards uh, hardware in the loop testing and automated production testing, we really need tools that allow us to maintain this agility and speed that we've been fighting for and maintain it through while still scaling up to the volumes that we need. Okay, yeah, and I'm sure there's a lot of people in the audience that share that challenge of making sure that they can maintain their efficiency as they go to production. Now, a little later in this keynote, our chief platform officer is gonna share some ideas that we've got about where the NI platform is headed that I think you might be interested in. Santiago, thank you for your time. Thank you. And I look forward to flying to work. Thank you.